I'm not sure why, but there's been this myth going around the last little while that HDMI adds latency to your signals. So if you have to use HDMI, you're delaying your video signals going through a video production system like a switcher. I don't buy it, but I wanted to find out for sure. So I've set up a test rig. Hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a live event video production company in Orem, Utah. And I've got this video production trailer that I've built for specifically for that purpose. And I've produced this YouTube channel talking about video production related topics. And so I've got this rig set up to test out the myth that HDMI adds latency to your signal. Over here I have, the, this is a Sony PVM A170. Uh, this is an OLED production monitor. It's a pretty low latency monitor and as you can notice here, we've got two separate video signals going in. So what's happening here? I have an SDI signal coming from a camera that's, that's pointed at this. That's going to a Blackmagic SDI to HDMI converter. The loop output from there is going into input one on the monitor. HDMI output of that converter is going into an HDMI input on an HDMI to SDI converter. And then the SDI output of that is going to the second input on this monitor. And so what you're seeing here on the left this is a direct SDI feed, and on the right, this is a feed that gets converted to HDMI and then back to SDI. If there's any conversion issues, if there's any latency in HDMI, we'll see it over here. Now, to the naked eye, it doesn't really look like there's anything, but we're going to take this to the next level and test it a little bit more thoroughly. So I'm going to get out a, a clapboard, a slate, and shoot some footage at 120 frames per second, and we'll see exactly what's going on, whether the signal going through HDMI is delayed by any more than the one on SDI. All right, as you watch that, uh, you f first of all, notice that there's a little bit of latency from, from camera to the time that the signal actually comes out of the monitor. But we're not measuring that here today. We're, we're more concerned about any sort of conversion uh, and any sort of latency introduced by HDMI. All right, so what if we had, if we go to this, this, uh, this test here, advance to the frame where the slate is fully closed. Okay, there we go, 4428. And then we'll advance one, two, three, four, five, six frames. There we go. So in the SDI feed, the slate is all the way closed. And then one, two more frames, and then it's fully closed on the HDMI feed. So two frames and 120 frames per second. It's equivalent of one frame at 60 frames per second. So basically, in, in for this test, we're seeing that there is a one frame delay going through the HDMI converters. Now, I can't necessarily say whether that's because it's being converted twice or whether my monitor has additional frame of latency on the input doing the side-by-side -side view. Either could be the case, but what I can say with confidence is that HDMI is not adding a meaningful amount of delay here. Now let's look at the next test that, that I did. Same, I ran the same thing again. So playback, okay, yeah, and then we'll look at it frame by frame. Okay, so slate is fully closed there, 5140. Then we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Six frames at 120 frames per second. So that's three frames at 60 frames per second. We're seeing the signal being output on the monitor uh, and the SDI, and then one, two more frames for the HDMI. So the HDMI is effectively one frame behind for a 60 frames per second signal using this particular test setup. So again, I can't necessarily say whether it's a problem with being converted twice from SDI to HDMI and HDMI back to SDI, but worst case scenario, we're talking about one frame. All right, now let's, let's actually take this up a level and introduce a switcher into the mix. All right, now, to see how much latency is added by the ATEM mini switcher, I've connected it up to the setup. Previously, I had the SDI to HDMI output going into directly into the HDMI to SDI uh, converter. Now, the HDMI output there goes to the input, input one on the ATEM mini switcher, and the output of the ATEM mini goes to the HDMI input. So what you're seeing here, direct feed from the camera, output of the switcher, and I'll just do a quick transition here. So you can see that actually is the output of the switcher you're seeing there on the right. And so we're going to run this test again and see how much additional delay having the switcher in the mix. Again, this is one quarter normal speed. First take. 
There's second take. Okay, so let's go back to this first one. So find this, the frame where it's actually fully closed. There we go, okay. And then from there we go one, two, three, four, five, six frames until it's fully closed on the SDI input. And then one, two more frames and it's fully closed on the HDMI input, which is, which is going through the ATEM mini switcher. So effectively, the same as before. So two frames at 120 frames per second or one frame at 60 frames per second. It's the only latency that's actually there. Let's look at the second one here so you can see the same thing. Fully closed. Yeah, I'd say that right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, fully closed on SDI. One, two, fully closed on the HDMI. Same result. So one, one additional frame. And again, that could just be because of the SDI to HDMI. An HDMI to SDI conversion. In fact, it probably actually is. All right, so there we have it. It looks like the ATEM Mini doesn't actually add any additional latency to the signal chain in this particular situation. So let me say something about delay and how, how it works. So with video, you're, you've got a display that's constantly outputting frames. You know, it, it has to output a new frame. In this case, this monitor is outputting a new frame every 60th of a second. And what, what happens is if there's any delay whatsoever, even a pixel, it has to wait until it starts drawing the next frame in order to start using that, that footage. So if there's any additional latency added by these converters, which there almost certainly has to be, it's going to show up as one frame on this monitor. It's just the way that it works. Because that signal has to always keep going, if, if, that, if the incoming signal is not ready to be displayed at the time the monitor needs to display a picture, it's basically going to wait until the start of the next frame to start, start to start displaying that. So what that really means is that there is any latency that we're seeing here is probably due to the conversion going SDI to HDMI and HDMI back to SDI, not inherently because of HDMI itself. Any additional delay, either in the initial test or in the test using the ATEM Mini switcher. So every time we did the, we ran this test, the right portion of the screen showed one additional frame at 60 frames per second, two frames at 120 frames per second, or just one frame at 60 frames per second, as shown on this monitor. So bottom line is. No, HDMI does not add any latency to the signal inherently by the way that it works. So let's please crush this rumor, stop this myth that HDMI delays signals because in reality, it just doesn't do that. If it did, we wouldn't have gamers using Xboxes and Playstations because the latency from the game's console to the display would be such that the games would become unplayable. So, there you go. Bottom line, HDMI does not have any additional latency to it. So, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. I'm going to do much better about releasing new content moving forward. The one thing that's held me back in the past is having to edit the video. I don't enjoy editing, and I've got somebody who's going to take care of that for me now. You guys have met her on the channel, uh, Witty Film Girl. So moving forward, I'm going to be producing more content, and I'm going to be trying to focus a little bit more on some of the basics. A lot of the stuff on this channel has been very technical in nature in the, in the past, and I will certainly be including that kind of content, but I'm going to try and shift a little bit to include some of, more of the basics. We're seeing a lot more people who are getting into this who don't have a background in film or video. Therefore, I think it's probably the time to start introducing more content for those who are just getting started. And to that end, I will be including more training type, simple training type videos here on this channel. And that, if that's the sort of thing that interests you, or if you want to keep seeing some of the more hardcore, technical, in-depth discussions that we have here, please consider subscribing for those as well. If you're running your own video production business, please take a few minutes to go look at my Crew Access website. It's a website that I actually created for myself. I have a background as a software developer, and I wanted to create a website to maintain and manage everything about my own business. Keep track of my equipment, communicate with my crew, 
keep up to date on my billing and invoicing. So all those things are there on the website, and it's specifically made for the video production industry. So if that's something that might be beneficial to you, please go take a look. I've got plans there that range anywhere from free, so if you don't have any budget, you can get in and use the site, all the way up to something that would be used by an enterprise corporate style AV department. So lots of different options in between. I do make one promise to you that once you sign up for a plan that I will never increase your rate. Go check it out and sign up for a plan if it meets your needs. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.